Last May, just before the primary election, we took you inside a meeting put on by a national nonprofit that was trying to suture the gaping wound of civility in America when it comes to politics. Braver Angels put on a red-blue workshop in Boise that brought together both sides of the political spectrum, the blue and red members of the community who would share what they believe, why they believe it, and see if they could find any common ground without shouting at each other on social media. Here's a little sample of that story. The goal of this exercise is... But the Braver Angels are a bridge. And see if there's any common ground. And their flagship's founder... ...was a marriage counselor. ...built it out of his practice. And they knew that if a husband and wife could not communicate, couldn't talk, there was no hope to save the marriage. And they saw that in the country. So while organizers weren't too optimistic about saving said marriage in a matter of hours, they were at least hoping to renew a vow of dignity and respect and honesty in that afternoon. Well, that afternoon in April, the Braver Angels ran their workshop with a group of about 20. But how would it work in a smaller setting, which is kind of how most of us interact? Could civility or even common ground be found one-on-one? -on -one? We decided to find out when we brought together a real estate agent and an owner of a bathroom remodeling company. They both were coming from the same side of the aisle, but they weren't exactly filling the same row when it came to immigration. My name is Gary. Uh, my name's Peter. I'm a registered Republican. And I'm a Republican. But for the last nine years, I have decided not to join the Trump cult. How long have you lived in Idaho? 32 years. Since 1972. The one you're going to be discussing today is immigration. Immigration. I'm in favor of immigration. I am pro-immigration. I am also concerned about just having a free-for-all. It's proven to be good for the economy. Of letting anybody and everybody come in. And the essential jobs in America would be vacant without immigrants. So that's probably my differing point. It'll be interesting to see if any progress is made. What's good about your side regarding the issue of immigration? What I like about the current policy that the Democrats are talking about is a pathway to citizenship. That's, people come to this country because they see it as a shining light on the hill. Amen. And then they want to take care of their families just like we want to take care of our families. It is way better for us as a country to get them legal, to get them compensated legally instead of under the table. So they're getting the benefits they deserve for working hard in America. My third son, uh, as I mentioned, married into a family, the Castanetas from Portland. Uh, parents, first generation migrants. Mother was a migrant field worker and they had to go through the process and they're the American story. Incredible, incredible uh, situation. So. I am aware that the border influx has, has lessened. I'm not down there, obviously. But my concern is just over the, the effects of just having it be a free-for-all. That's really it. I'm a big believer in it for our country. That's what we're based on. But there's got to be some, some barriers put around it. You know, we agree immigration is good for the country. Yeah. I think what we disagree about is what's going on at the border. I have just seen some of the ramifications of it. You know, again, if we can get stuff tightened down and I'm concerned about, you know, on the criminal side of things and the amount of drugs and everything that are coming through, I have firsthand experience that with that through my, my father-in-law has passed away, but he was a criminal defense attorney. So he used to defend and he only did federal drug cases. So he used to defend a lot of these guys and, and just learning firsthand on how they think and how they look at access to our country, it's, it's just interesting. I can tell you that at Best Bath, 31% of our workforce, 72 out of 230, are first generation immigrants. 38 of 230 are second generation immigrants. So we have, a, we have a lot of immigrants working for us. Their stories about what they had to go through to get to this country are just, they're heart rendering. But just because you live in a bad country, whatever that means, doesn't mean you have a right to come to America. And so we have to be real clear what the rules are so people can come here in a safe, way and get processed through the border only if they qualify to become legal citizens. 
And then once they're here, we need to give them the help they need to get on their feet quickly. I agree 100%. I think in speaking and listening, I think that our difference is who we think might be able to do that, right? That's what it sounds like to me. Right. Yeah. Different policies, um, different approaches, et cetera. You know, you get put in this category of being heartless and cruel and if you, if you have uh, any sort of strictness, if you will, or concerns over some of the, you know, fallout issues that happen from a mass, mass uh, border opening. The last three and a half years is when this whole surge happened. And so where was the screening? Where was the, where was it? Where, where was it? That's the, that's the, you know, it's, it's this, you hear about the new chapter and you're like, well, the last three and a half years is where we've been and this is what happened. So that, this is what goes through my head. I, and I, you can take the people out of the equation. I'm just talking about the situation and the challenge we're dealing with. Well, I think what Peter just said is, is true. The first, the first two and a half years, I don't know if it's three and a half, but the first two and a half years of Biden's administration, the, board, the border was terrible. And, you know, it's a federal government responsibility. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he finally, through executive orders, got that under control. And I don't know why it took so long, because both parties play politics with the border. That's the biggest problem. I kind of look at, you have all the rhetoric, right? And then those that are actually put in the position of being in charge, what has happened? And that's where I go back and again, taking the individuals out of the equation, how are you going to convince me that going forward, you're going to do these things when you were there the past three and a half years? That's, that's Gary, I'm just, that's what I struggle with. And I, I listen to, you know, again, the, the different conventions and I hear all the stuff said, but I don't really see a lot of stuff happening. Gotcha. And I see that on, I mean, you can even boil it down to our local level. There's a lot of talking, but no action. So you can see there's a lot of common ground there. A lot of civility as well. They kind of found that pretty early on. Well, that wasn't the only conversation we had. We sat in on a couple of different one-on-one -on -one sessions, and we're going to bring those to you over the next couple of weeks as well. If you would like to participate in one of the Braver Angels group sessions, they're always looking for volunteers. We're going to have a link to their website in this story that we just aired or the story we did last spring. You can find both of those on our website at ktvb.com.